So Hell in a Cell is coming up Sunday. And I gotta say, typically, I would be kind of bashing on the WWE for only having five announced matches this close to the actual show, less than 24 hours away. You got five announced matches, and three of them being title matches inside of Hell in a Cell. Usually, I would come on here and bash them for that. But, selfishly, less is more. Five matches is plenty. Thank you, Tribal Chief! You have listened to the fans. Now, certainly, they will do their best to probably slide another match or two onto the main card. Space it out a little bit. Fine. Whatever. Um, but it is totally all due to Roman Reigns, and he deserves all the glory, and y'all shall thank him as your tribal chief! I think what actually worries me more about this show coming up on Sunday night is the fact that you've got three Hell in a Cell matches. Like, this is like the old lockdown TNA pay-per-view, where you had every match is in the cage, or close to every match is in the cage. Here's the thing, you do it once a year, so maybe it's not so bad, but then you get to the thing of, it's a gimmick pay-per-view, but you, it's an overuse of the gimmick, and it kind of loses its special feel. And I kind of can agree with that sentiment. And I would rather Hell in a Cell be the type of stipulation that a story for a feud actually merits instead of trying to make the feud and the match fit for the gimmick of the pay-per-view. Um, now, that said, I can say, when you look at Sunday, you can make an argument for all three of them, the WWE Championship, the SmackDown Women's Championship, the Universal Championship. You can make a case that all three matches belong in the cell. Certainly can make the case for at least two of them. That's the SmackDown Women's Championship and the Universal Championship. Raw, you know, the WWE Championship, with Orton and McIntyre, eh, I'll give you that. Although, maybe it would be better if there was a different stipulation to that match. So, I'm not a huge fan of having three Hell in a Cell matches on the same night. You know, I'm not really a fan of having that many. But, it might work out okay here. It might. Um, still kind of surprised again, like I said, that there are only five matches on the card. But that's probably not the worst thing in the world. Now, when you talk about the non- Hell in a Cell matches, like I said, we've got two of them right now. One, I believe, is Jeff Hardy versus Elias. Um, it's interesting that Elias is returning, so he's getting a pay-per-view spot, but Lars Sullivan is not getting a pay-per-view spot. And Retribution, again, is not getting a pay-per-view spot. Have they gotten a pay-per-view match yet at all? At all? At all? And people are supposed to take this group seriously? No wonder I'm not watching Raw. Um, that that it's that match, and then there's the other one that actually has quite a bit of story behind it, and that's the match for the Money in the Bank contract between Otis and the Miz. Look, I could go either way with this match. I could make an argument for let Otis win and let him keep this briefcase, let him continue to hold the contract and figure it out later down the road what you're going to do. Um, or I could say this is a perfect opportunity to get it off of him. Have Jomo interfere in some way that helps Miz win it and let Miz carry it over and, and let him do something with it. Like, you know, you, you could. You can make an argument either way. I, I, at least I can say this, is that there is actually a storyline here for this. I am somewhat engaged and intrigued by it. So whatever happens, happens. But... At least I could say there's a match on the card that's not the Universal Championship main event uh, that I care about. Um, the one Hell in a Cell match I could probably do the least without is Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. Now, I say that because while you can certainly make the argument that the story has, has developed enough and they've done enough things to where Hell in a Cell should be the appropriate blow-off. There's also a point in time, too, where I just feel like this has kind of outlived its usefulness. Because Drew's beaten him not once, but twice now. First was with that roll-up finish. The second time, next go-round, he's beating him in the ambulance match because he's getting the retirement home to come out and help him. 
Like, why do we need a third one when the heel hasn't won? Orton hasn't won once in a pay-per-view match. So why are we doing this again? This almost feels like you're forcing it. Like the ambulance match should have been the end of it. Not just a building block and an escalation to the next point. There's no point here. And this is so often where the WWE runs into trouble because they don't know how to book the villains. They don't know how to book the heroes. The heels are the ones to hate. The baby faces or excuse me, the heels aren't the ones to hate. They're the ones to get behind because they're the ones that have to come over, overcome all the obstacles. The baby faces are the ones to hate because they are the effing obstacle. The John Cena approach to professional wrestling. So who are they going to have win? Certainly it's probably going to be Drew McIntyre. You've already had him beat Orton twice on paper. Why the hell wouldn't you do it the third time around? That's all I can think of here. Uh, the SmackDown Women's Championship Hell in a Cell match. I think a lot of you were going to be looking forward to this, and I'm kind of lukewarm on it. You know, at least they finally went there, took them damn long enough to do so. But that doesn't mean that I mean that incredibly engaged in this. I still think kind of the whole premise for this is just kind of, Ugh. and I think Sasha Banks in this type of role is kind of. Ugh. I think Bailey in her role certainly works a whole heck of a lot better. Um. But maybe you could channel some of that magic from the TakeOver show many years ago that everybody still always talks about. And maybe these two could go out there and really put on a big show. And they very well could. And they need to for where the story is. Like, they can't go out there and have a standard paint-by-numbers cookie-cutter type of Hell in a Cell match. Like, it needs to be brutal. It needs to be intense. It needs to outshine the Orton McIntyre one, that's for damn sure, and I actually expect it to do so. As far as who wins here, like I would expect it would be Sasha Banks. Like, what was the point if you don't have her win here? Really, like, what's the point? Kind of similar to the Orton McIntyre feud at this point. What's the point? I don't know. But, who cares? This, this show is all about one match, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not get it twisted. It is all about family business. It is all about the tribal chief trying to prove his place at the head of the table for the Samoan family dynasty. It's Jey Uso versus our hero, the number one babyface in WWE, the number one hero in all of professional wrestling today, our tribal chief, the big dog, he runs the yard. It's Roman Reigns. And what a beautiful story this has been. Just absolutely magnificent. Magnificent. I mean, it just doesn't get better than this. You've got so many familial elements to play off of here. And the, the kind of interesting dichotomy of, you know, Jay making this big heel turn and Roman having made this well overdue babyface turn. And if you're going to disagree with that, I've explained this for a couple of months now. Every week, we see how this is playing out. Roman has responsibilities as at the man, the king, the tribal chief at the head of the table. Like He keeps trying to give Jay chances, and Jay just won't listen. Jay just won't back down. It's like a woman, no matter how much you try to provide them logic and reason, they just can't control themselves, and they'll keep coming after you. Until they think you're going to submit. Well, Roman Reigns ain't no punk ass. He ain't no bitch. You mess with the bull. You're going to get the horns, Jay. And the same goes for you too, Jimmy. I, I mean, here he is helping get his cousin a second consecutive main event pay-per-view payout. And him, Jay and his brother Jimmy are organizing sneak attacks, Pearl Harbor type jobs, on the champion. And I'm sorry, I'm supposed to boo Roman Reigns here? And even the stipulation of this being an I quit match. Like even with that, Roman is predicting, not predicting, it's the spoiler. He is telling Jay what is going to happen. So he's making his intentions very clear. Like if you have a daughter, you want the dude that she's going to date, or the girl she's going to date, I guess, to make their intentions very clear, don't you? Well, Roman is making his intentions very clear. And he is letting Jay know that when he loses, there will be consequences. But even then, even then, even then, 
he is still going to extend Jay one last opportunity to acknowledge that Roman has earned the respect, that Roman is the tribal chief, and that they have a chance still. Even after all of this, the Pearl Harbor job, the sneak attacks, the heelish, villainous behavior that Jay has perpetrated and Jimmy has helped kind of hooliganize with them, here's Roman Reigns, the hero, still trying to give one more chance. It's kindness to a fault. And just like family, they're obviously going to continue to try and take advantage of it. Well, all of that's got to stop at some point in time on Sunday, and by God it will, and I can't wait. But can't wait. Can't wait. Because their last match at pay-per-view was outstanding. Now you're talking about in a hell in a cell, and it's going to be an I quit match. Sign me the F up. This story has been magnificent. Roman Reigns is magnificent. Jay Uso as a heel, magnificent. Everything about it works. And come Sunday night, I have to give you a spoiler. Roman's going to make dude quit. He's going to give him a chance. And maybe, just maybe, hopefully, Jay and Jimmy will come to their senses. But if not, they won't. If they don't, they don't. And Roman is prepared for all contingencies and possibilities. Again, yet another responsibility of the tribal chief. So some of you sycophants can sit there and continue to try and perpetuate this lie, this Illuminati lie, that Roman is a heel when you know darn good and well who you should be cheering for here. It is clear. It is plain as day. It is as simple as that. And if anything else, Jay and Jimmy, like, Keish didn't do anything. Don't get him ostracized from the family because of your foolishness and your stubbornness and your hard-headedness. Don't do it. Roman tried to warn him. Fools just don't want to listen. You know, to me, hell in a cell. I'm so focused in on that main event. I'm so focused in on Jay and Roman. The rest of the show could be doo-doo, but that main event match is going to deliver. It's absolutely going to deliver. And when it does, I'll forget about everything else. And in a while, I will have enjoyed my night, Sunday night. That's it. It's a one-match show. You can take this other stuff off of this damn card as far as I'm concerned and just make it Jay versus Roman for two and a half hours. Better than most anything we've gotten out of wrestling in the past decade. Now, you guys did certainly feel free to let me know in the comments what you expect to see out of Sunday night's show. And you can smash that subscribe button and like this video. Let me know what you think is going to happen. We know what's going to happen. The tribal chief is going to reign on his island come Sunday night. And Jay's going to rue the day. Rue the day! He ever pushed back one more time against his cuz.